Hi, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net, and today we're going to go over the differences technically between a smaller swing on the forehand side and a bigger swing on the forehand side. And first, I'm going to show you the smaller swing. So after the split step, what we see with our players, number one, is that the hitting elbow will be slightly away from the body, but through the unit turn, the tip of the racket will remain in front of the player's hitting hand, most of the time creating some type of a tilt during the unit turn with the racket here. So we split. We get these two points in place, and then from this position, the racket comes down and is naturally set a little bit more off to the right side of the body, and then we can whip through and create that racket head speed. Uh, with a larger swing, we see a different set of technical checkpoints, and I'll go over those right now, but we see the split step position, and the first thing that we usually see is the players bring the racket vertically like this, which pushes the elbow in and tight to the body, which assists in the swing later on, as we'll see, but we see this move, we see that push up and like this and into the body. We notice the wrist is vertical, the strings of the racket are more off to the side, and now naturally it's going to be difficult for a player to come off to the side over here. They're going to want to go either to here with the wrist or they're going to want to break the plane behind them like this and make more of a circular swing. What I'm going to show you right now is some special video we have of the pros with and without the racket to highlight some of these technical checkpoints. I'm going to start by showing an example of the larger swing from the side view with Simona Hollop here on the left. Uh, the left video, she has no racket, and the video on the right, she has a racket. And what we can see in the beginning is Hollop does a really good job with the orange circles of getting her elbow away, but she kind of goes away from that in the unit turn. So as the stroke progresses, we get the unit turn going here. What we see with the video on the right especially is the racket is vertical. Her elbow has moved instead of away, it's moved kind of forward, and now it's in that position that we want to try to avoid. And the video on the left with the uh, blue circle area, we can see that Hollop's wrist is in that strong laid back position. Uh, we're going to move on to a side by side now of Federer. So now we've switched over to a video of Roger with no racket on the left and with his racket on the right, and we'll see those technical checkpoints of the smaller swing. And again, what we see, like we saw with the larger swing, at least with Hollop, was the elbow position is actually away from the body here. He's got that space, and it's going to help prevent breaking the plane later on in the swing, hopefully. Uh, but from this position, what we see with Federer is definitely a severe tilt of the racket where the tip of the racket head is maintained in front of the hitting hand throughout the unit turn of the swing. Federer kind of does this later on in the swing, and you can see that severe tilt there. You can also see the video on the left in the square that he has that elbow position and that elbow space away from his body. We're going to switch over to a video now of Hollop from the rear with Federer. So now we have Roger Federer pictured on the left and Hollop on the right from the back view. And in this video, they both have the rackets. The next one will be without. And what we can see from this position is really what we talked about in the on-court portion. But Federer's wrist is in a much more neutral position while Hollop has that wrist in a strong laid back position with that racket upright. And from this position, as they come back and forward, uh, we can see that Hollop's racket has now broken the plane. The tip of the racket is on the left side, and Federer's maintained that right side position with the palm of his hand kind of pointed down to the right and his forearm pointed down and to the right a bit. Um, as they move forward from here, before they pull the racket forward, uh, we can see that Federer still maintains that position on the right side of the body while Hollop has a stronger position on the left side. We're going to look at it now without the racket. In our final segment, we're going to look at both players without the racket in their hands. So we're going to go through the swing here. And again, what we notice with Hollop is that right wrist is cocked up and really laid back early on. But as they get to the bottom of the swing, that's really where the most interesting things take place. We can see by the blue line, that's a trace of Hollop's hand, that her swing is significantly more circular than the swing of Federer. If I just let this go, you can see that path to the ball and the difference in the path to the ball with both players' hands. And just one more time, Federer's path is considerably more direct which certainly lends itself towards more racket head speed and spin and definitely a heavier ball. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. Please check out FieldTennis.net. These uh, videos were inspired by Tomas over there. Uh, he's done a great job and uh, we'll be collaborating with each other hopefully in the future.